so special as the church we get to do this together you can be seated I'm gonna let you sit right at the beginning I felt bad the first gathering I just kept going and did not seat them so I'm just gonna sit you right away today God is moving in our church can you feel it you know that it's happening what a privilege to be a part of a move of God to see who he's drawing in new faces new families it's so special thank you so much for letting yourself be drawn by him for worshiping him like you do and so since God has been moving we're going to be moving as well making some shifts and so we wanted to let you know that that starting next Sunday this gathering is going to start 15 minutes later at 11 15 yes <laughs> I was like, someone's clapping, but it's someone who works here, so they get the, they know. But I know that uh, you have felt a little bit of that tension when the 9.30 is letting out and you're coming in, and so we're going to separate those two gatherings a little bit more to make it a little bit easier to get in, get your coffee, drop off your kids, and start the gathering. So this is next week, 11.15, because as you can tell, there's not a whole lot of room in this space. Which brings me to the next announcement, and that is Easter with Freedom, which is one month away, and it's amazing that it's already here, and, and P-Dub started talking about this last week, and really is encouraging us, asking us, especially this group right here, you're the group, to consider moving to a less crowded gathering so that we can create some space for the guests that are gonna come, and also the people that don't come all that often, but they are sure they will be here on Easter. Easter's a bit of an all skate. Everyone that calls Easter home, they come on that weekend, and so we're asking you to consider, can you move to the 8 a.m. or move to Saturday night, and it'll make room for who God's gonna bring our way. And another way we're gonna help encourage that is we are going to have an Easter reservation system and it's gonna go live Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for you to let us know which gathering you're coming to. But I'm memorizing all of your faces right now so that I can see that you're gonna sign up for the Saturday night. Thank you so much for doing that in advance. But we're just believing that God is drawing people in and we don't want anything to distract from them meeting with God. Don't you think that sounds like a good idea? And so tough traffic and tough check-in and crowded, overcrowded. It, it's not a great experience for guests. And so thanks for joining with us on that. And how many of you would say, Joey, I am going to consider that. Okay. I'm just going to pray God is going to do something to you to get you to consider that boldness. And you know, I'm just kidding. I just started to just declare some things. For those that just, well, thank you so much. We do appreciate that. Hey, I want to wish a happy anniversary to my wife. It's today, 17 years. 17 years, three daughters and a dog. Like, we're doing it, people. It's happening in our house. And so thankful. Proverbs says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And I have found a great thing. Those of you that know her, you know that. You're like, Joey, she is the greatest. So very grateful for her. Blessed today to be a part of dedicating families to the Lord. How many of you know that family is God's design? It's God's design. He placed you in the family that you have. And of course, we are all a part of God's family. And, and here's what I know, no matter what your family life was like growing up or like it's been recently, I know this to be true, that God is for your family. And maybe it's been full of pain, but God is the healer of pain. Maybe you would describe it as just crazy and chaotic, but God can settle that storm as we just sang about. And maybe some relationships right now are fractured and they're difficult and they're broken. God is the expert mender of relationships. And so today my prayer has been that you would have some hope and some faith to believe for greater family days ahead in Jesus' name. Let me read you this passage of scripture and then we will move on. So this is how long the first gathering was standing, everyone. They were still up for this time. This is just so you know. <laughs> Psalm 127, verses one through five. It says, unless the Lord builds a house, and I would say, unless the Lord builds your house, 
the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects the city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for it's God who gives rest to his loved ones. He's not saying you shouldn't work hard. He's saying you should recognize where the source is, where it all comes from. How many of you want God to bless your home and to bless your work? That's what he's talking about. And then where we'll land today, children are a gift from the Lord. Say gift. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man, I love this, are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. We need to say quiver more in our lives. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. Lord Jesus, speak to us now from your word. Let none of us leave the same. In Jesus' name, amen. I got a bow and arrow for Christmas once. It was pristine. It was exciting. It was not this one. I don't even know what this is. I asked for a bow and arrow. I thought it was going to be wood with one string. You pull back. This is some military grade death weapon that's here on the stage. In fact, I've tried. I was going to do this in front of you, but I have tried to pull it back and I can't. I can't do it. So anyway, this is a bow and arrow, not the one I got for Christmas. Mine had the little suction cups. You know what I'm talking about at the end? You would wet the ends of them, and then you would pull them back, and you would hope they would stick to the wall. And they worked the best on the fridge and on the TV. There was a time where you could shoot them at your TV because the glass was so heavy and just so perfect for, for that. And so... Now I don't even let my kids near the TV. I don't even breathe near the TV. You're too close to the TV. But I got a bow and arrow. And for me, my generation, we would act like Robin Hood. That's not it anymore. Now they act like Hawkeye from the Marvel movies. And so I had suction cups. Hawkeye has every kind of arrow you could think of. Explosive arrows, ones that turn into a zip line, releases a poisonous gas, tases people, splits into three, becomes a net. Again, I was just content with my suction cups. Like, I was good with it. But I'm so fascinated from this scripture and how Solomon describes our kids like arrows and paints a vivid picture. He doesn't just skip over and say, hey, we all know that our kids are important, okay? He says... It's like arrows in the hands of a warrior is your toddler. Like a sugarized, napless, deadly weapon is your child a gift from the Lord. That our children are like arrows and the family is like the quiver and the job of the parent is to be the archer that releases that arrow towards the target. Are you following me? And so what I would love for you to grasp a truth to take away, and I think the scripture illustrates this, is this. You are meant to be the arrow, not the target. Our kids are arrows, not targets. You are an arrow and not a target. See, the world thinks it's the opposite. The world, the enemy sees, sees us, sees them as targets, someone to be influenced. But the believer of Jesus is not tossed to and fro, influenced by the enemy and his schemes and conforming to culture and every changing desire and standard. No, the believer of Jesus is the influencer. We have the arrows in us with the target in our sights. And so parents, what should you and I be focused on as we raise our kids? What should the goal be? What are we shooting and aiming towards? What's the bullseye? My kids, all girls, they are 10, 9, and 2. And some of you are in a similar season, but some of your kids are all grown. And I'm definitely in still the on-the-job training mode right now when it comes to parenting. And so I am gleaning and trying to learn from everyone that I can that has been where I am and has now moved on from that. And so I know this to be true, that God has designed it for all of us to aim and hit the bullseye when it comes to our parenting. And as I share these, I want you to listen not just as parents, but as kids that are loved by a heavenly father. Because the truth is, we are all arrows because we are all God's kids. Are you with me? 
We are all arrows in the hands of the mightiest of warriors, and that is God himself. So this message, I think, kind of has two sides, like double-sided tape. It's a fantastic invention, and so I'm hoping that either side will stick to you. And so the first takeaway I want you to write down is this. Children are a blessing, not a burden. Children are a blessing and not a burden. What do you need to know in order to take aim as a parent? What should the frame of mind be, the starting place? Maybe you're single, don't have kids yet, or whatever stage of parenting you may be in, you need to know, Psalm 127, that children are a gift. They are a blessing from the Lord, a reward for him, from him. And it says, how joyful, which the translation of this in Hebrew, how joyful, really is this. Happy, happy, happy is the man or woman who has kids. To which some of you say, I'm happy, but I ain't that happy, Pastor Joey. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that being a parent doesn't sometimes feel like a burden, that the truth is parenting can feel very burdensome because it's not easy. One minute, it's just the two of you, and you are just rolling through life, doing what you want, sleeping in on the weekend. It's a beautiful thing. And then everything changes. The world is turned upside down by a six and a half pound mini you. And now that mini you calls all the shots. It's hard. My wife and I have three. And going out to dinner with three young kids takes a particular set of skills to pull off. We have had to hone in on these skills for 17 years. We have worked on them now and thought about them. And now, like I said, it's on the job training. We know what we have to do. We have to get to a restaurant where there is no wait. We have to be escorted right to the table. We order before we sit down. And we remind them to bring the kids' food out first before anything else. Don't even talk to the other tables that are in your section. Go right to the thing and ring it up right now. Of course we want lids on our cups. Why waste our time and ask such a silly question like that? In fact, I'd like to pay the check now before the adult food comes. Because listen, Linda, things are going to go south at some point. And when things go south, we're not going to have the time to wait for you to fill out our check and bring us the bill. And listen, we will tip well, I promise. We will be quick and we will be out of your hair. Trust us. We just know what needs to happen here. How many parents are out there? Where's the mac and cheese? Can we swing by the kitchen on the way to our table and just grab a bowl so we can just be ready to go? We've worked on this. We know what needs to happen. So... If you want to take kids out as parents, it's that. <laughs> or maybe get a babysitter, which seems like a good idea. But it's hard to get a babysitter when you have three kids. Does anyone know that? Especially when there's no family around. And you want to treat the babysitter well. And you, you want them to know you but not know you that well. You know, just because there's just stuff all over and underwear on the floor. Whatever. A house is a mess. You don't want them to judge you. But then you realize it's expensive to pay a babysitter, like really expensive. And so we're like, what can we do? Well, I guess we could share a meal and then we'll come home hungry and eat cereal anyway. And so maybe we'll find a restaurant that gives free bread and free chips and salsa and that'll help us fill our tummies. And so when faced with these options, what do we do? Well, we'll just stay home because <laughs> kids just change everything. It's hard. Bedtime is a needle that has to be threaded so perfectly. <laughs> too early and they don't go down. Wait too long and they get a second wind like the next day has started already at nighttime. <laughs> I have a two-year-old named Sophia and just this week I was trying to thread the needle. Amy was not home. I was threading this thing, gauging the clock staring at her a lot, just looking like, when's the time here? I thought it was going great. And so I finally said, all right, babe, it's time to get ready for bed. And she looked at me and she said, no, thank you, and went back to her life. <laughs> but I was so shocked with how polite she was. I was like, okay, like maybe she shouldn't go to bed. Yeah, I missed the window. 
Potty training and bath time and teeth brushing and diapers. Parenting isn't easy, and that's just when they are little. I feel like no one prepared us for they grow up. Where are the parents of teenagers and older out there? They grow up, and they get voices, loud voices, and opinions, and they are strong opinions, just like their moms. But... so strong there is so much emotion in my house right now I need help I just is a cry for help this message but I feel like it's a trick because they go through the stages and then they start mellowing out a bit and you're like hey we're good parents we got this we're doing good and God laughs from heaven and he says, ha ha, watch this. And he makes them 13. He makes them <laughs> teenagers. And I feel for the parents of teenagers. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to have three at one time, ladies and gentlemen. Can you fast and pray for your campus pastor starting today? But I'm convinced that the mood of a 13-year-old is the most unpredictable thing in the entire universe. Everything you feel like is going great Good morning, honey. And the response is, I hate everything in this world and everything in my school and life has no meaning. Speak not of this good morning. <laughs> All you're doing is holding a stack of pancakes and that's what you're met with. Parenting is so hard. And at this point, I should probably stop and share with you that I love my children very much. I just want to get that out there. Because point one, which I've really veered off, is that children are a blessing and not a burden. <laughs> and the truth, though, is that a blessing can sometimes be confused with a burden because they are both heavy. Parenting, while it is a blessing, it is weighty. It's weighted with responsibility. It's loaded with daily choices. It's heavy. And the reason why it's heavy is because parenting is the most influential relationship in the entire universe. That no one has the potential to influence another human being like a parent. And that's positive or negative. That the words of a parent ring truer and louder in the life of a child than anyone else's. Moms, I would say this, that your words are a hundred times more powerful than anyone else's in the world. And dads, I would say that yours are 500 times more powerful than anybody else in the world. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. And I know it to be true because I've talked to grown men that have remembered something their dad said decades earlier that has defined their life. And so the words that we say to our kids really matter. And on top of that, as Christian parents, we're not just influencing them to be good citizens in the world. We are influencing them towards Jesus. That our aim above all is that they head straight to Jesus as fast as they can. That we are parenting at the edge of heaven. Think about it like this. Your child will grow up. And one day, how they feel towards their heavenly father will be filtered through their relationship with their earthly one. It's how they'll think about God. It's weighty. Mom's the same. We as parents represent God to our kids for a time. And it's not just parents. For those of you that are wondering, is there anything in this message for me? The truth is, for us as Christians, we represent God to the world around us. An orphaned world. And that's the target. That's the ultimate bullseye. And that is a blessing. It's a heavy blessing that will require us to grow and have greater faith. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 18. So we don't look at the troubles we see now, which are many. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things that we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. If you look at the job of parenting without faith, all you will see is the trouble. All you'll see is the burden. All you'll see is the problem. All you'll wonder is, what in the world can I do? There's nothing I can do. But if you can see parenting through the eyes of faith, you'll recognize that you have the ability to make an eternal impact that impacts the generations. 
And this goes for parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, kids leaders, youth leaders, coaches. It's all of us because it takes a village. And by faith, you won't just see the problem, you'll see the potential. That the burdens of parenting are temporary. That the diapers and the lost sippy cups and the temper tantrums and arguing about homework, that's temporary. Pastor Kelly, who leads our Middle River campus, he said it like this, being someone who has adult kids. Me and Helen, now being on the other side with adult children, yes, sometimes we think about and talk about, but mostly we laugh about the hard times bringing up our kids. We talk more about how God showed up and met us right in the middle of it time after time after time. How God gave us the grace and the patience and the wisdom that was needed. That God really did show himself to our kids all through the years, through every stage. And you know what? I just want to free someone and bless someone in this space right now. Sometimes that the fruit of God moving in your kids doesn't really show up in deeper ways until they are older. And I tell you that because every prayer matters. Every tear God has seen, every seed you have planted, it matters. And there are many in the space right now that have said, I did all that I could, and yet still, and I would say, no, have faith to believe that God cares about your kids even more than you do, and you will see them in the house of the Lord again. In Jesus' name. You will see them loving Jesus as adults. You will hear them pray and lead their families. And when they wrestle with life's issues, they're going to return to God's word as their source. And when you see them treat others with kindness and, and live a life for Jesus, that is the blessing that makes the burden worth it. It's worth it. The greatest aim for us as parents is to introduce our children to Jesus, to shepherd them to the good shepherd, to lead them to their heavenly father, to point them to the one that gives eternal life then and abundant life now. But can I make it personal? The double-sided tape for those in this space that need to hear this today. To your father in heaven, you are a blessing and not a burden. That Jesus took the burden of the entire world's sin and he went to the cross. That's something you and I will, will never have to experience. It was a burden, a heavy one, but it was a burden that he willingly carried because of his great love for you. And now, when you choose to follow him and devote your life to him, it blesses him. God's not shaking his finger and keeping his head hung low about you. The building didn't cave in when you came to church today. God's not mad at you. That when you take a step towards him, it blesses him. When you pray with a genuine heart, when you're real before him, when you walk in the footsteps of Jesus, when you're kind and forgiving and serving towards other people, when you worship freely and passionately to Jesus, you are the blessing that made the burden worth it. Our aim as parents and grandparents and leaders and coaches to aim our little arrows to the bullseye of Jesus. And how do we do that? I'm going to give you three things. There are three million, and I'm going to put a bunch underneath these, but I'm going to just give you three ways, and it has everything to do with these arrows. I grabbed one that had a really sharp point on it earlier this morning. I cannot be trusted with this, but for the sake of the example, <laughs> our kids are like arrows in the hands of a mighty warrior. So let's talk about arrows first that there are different kinds of arrows for different uses. They all have the same overall goal to hit the target, but there are different kinds of arrow. The body of arrows are made of wood, fiberglass, aluminum, solid carbon fiber. They're different. That's just the body. Then you have what's called the fletching. New word for me. I just thought it was the feathers at the end. But the feathery thing at the end... Sometimes they're real feathers. Sometimes they're plastic. Sometimes they're shaped and twisted. And that's the fetching. But then you have the arrowhead, which could be a bullet or a blunt end, something sharp. It can grab. It can fish. I think you could see where I am headed. There's such variety in the types of arrows, and there is such variety in our children. And when it comes to parenting, one style of parenting does not fit all. How many of you have more than one child, and you know this to be true? It's true that there are 
things in your house that should remain constant, that we have values as a family, that they're, they are established and immovable. But the way you parent each child has to adjust some. I have my first two who are 15 months apart and couldn't be any more different. It shocked me. The first one did not prepare us for the second one in any way. I felt like it was a joke. I thought we were good and ready to go. But the just didn't prepare us. They were so different in personality and learning style. The first was a master negotiator, a skill we did not teach. <laughs> but before I knew it, I was apologizing for the things she did wrong. <laughs> yes, you're right. That's probably my fault. I need to do better. And I would punish myself and not her. She was brilliant at it. But the way that she processed things was just beyond. It was, it was more advanced than what the second one was. The second one needed to process differently. And here's what I would say, that those differences are on purpose, but they're also a way for you to get before God quickly and say, Jesus, I have no idea what I'm doing. Can you please help us? And we get to watch the Holy Spirit work differently in their lives. Each child's different. We have to parent accordingly. And so there's such variety in the arrows. Number two, it really is all about the aim. That the arrow will only go where the archer aims it. And you'll rarely see an arrow make a 180 degree turn all by itself. It doesn't happen. The, the arrow flies true to the target when the archer consistently aims for the bullseye. Are you following me? It's about consistency. It's about intentionality. And your kids will be influenced by someone in life. And I say, let it be you. Let's work our hardest to win their hearts and to celebrate Jesus in front of them and aim them towards heaven. But it'll take intentionality and consistency. It'll take a flight plan. Most airlines, all airlines, they have a flight plan. They know before the plane even leaves what's going to happen. They say, here's the time of takeoff. Just so you know, they're lying. It's never that time. <laughs> they build in some padding so their stats look good, but then we sit on the runway for 30 minutes. It drives me crazy, but that has nothing to do with the message today. They have a flight plan. We're going to take off at this time. We're going to uh, ascend to this altitude. At this point, we're going to bank right. We're going to descend at this time. They have a flight plan. And my question, parents, is what is your flight plan or what's been your flight plan with your kids? Because this is one of those things that we can't just cross our fingers and wing and say, Jesus, take the wheel. I can't do it, but you do it. And there's some truth to the fact that we don't know everything. Of course, we, we need his help, but I think he's asking us, take aim, be consistent. What's the plan? Proverbs says, train up your child. What's the plan for training them. Archers just don't wing it. They take aim. And here's a few practical things to consider that I've been working on. I'm learning from other parents that are ahead of me. And the number one thing I believe that never changes, no matter the age of your kids, is you are just going to have to learn how to pray your guts out. And don't just get tired of praying. I mean, pray until you're tired from praying. Like I have just given it all and laid it out and I have prayed for my kids. Never changes. Another thing would be to love their hearts full. To have equal measures of love and discipline. Because the truth is that if you have rules without relationship, that always equals rebellion. So love them first and adjust the rules as they get older. And I would say maybe it's good to stay away from this phrase that our parents used on us and it's very easy for us to use on our kids when our kids ask why and how did our parents respond? Because I said so. Because I said so. And the truth is it's okay to share the why with your kids. This is why I'm asking you to do this. This is why you are not allowed to go to that party. This is why. Sometimes there may be moments you can't explain into detail, but please feel the freedom to share the why with them. Next thing would be is to get them into God's house. We've already talked about it because it takes a village. But I would say more than that, continue to cultivate environments where your kids are in the presence of the Lord. 
And that's not just a church thing, it's a home thing. That there have been times in our house where the TV's going, the device is going, and it just feels off and chaotic. And as parents, we say, turn the TV off and the device is off, and we put on worship music in our house. Why is that? Do the kids like that? No, they don't. But it just doesn't feel right in here, and we need to cultivate more of the presence of God in our house so God can do the things he wants to do and be able to speak into the lives of our kids. Are you following me so far? So worship isn't just a church thing in the Sarlo home. It's a home thing as well, that we're reading the scriptures with our kids. That the Bible is a central theme. Put up scripture verses on your walls, their walls. Text your child when you read a scripture that reminds you of them. And say, I was just reading this and your name popped into my mind. Learn how to laugh with your family. Laugh your heads off. Have fun. Don't underestimate humor in your home. It's a barrier breaker. It is a uniter. This next one I am working on and it is a struggle for me because I have a home of three young girls and that's this. To take interest in what interests them. I don't love the gymnastics. I don't love the baby dolls. I don't love the slime business. Dad, can you sit on the floor? That's tile. Like, I just not, I don't love sitting on tile there. So I'm the guy that's bringing pillows to the floor, trying to support my back. Like, it's just the whole thing. I don't, I don't love it, but I know that I need to be interested in what they are interested in. And here's why. Because whenever you have tried to schedule a family meeting to talk about serious things or to tell your kids, we're going to talk about this later, parents, how many of you know that oftentimes that does not go well? They're doing whatever they need to do to get through the meeting. They're just nodding, all of that. But when you're interested in what they're interested in, before you know it, they just start talking. And you're like, oh, radar up right now. I need, to talk to, I need to talk to my wife about that kid they're friends with, that that's going on right now. Like, there's just something about being interested in what they are that opens the door for you to be an influence. Is this okay, everyone? Are you following me so far? Parents that are, are just ahead of this, would you just say amen for all of those that are in the middle of it right now? I would say, think about these two ships. Friendships and mentorships. Your kids... You need to guard their friendships, but they need to have godly mentorships. And it's the last couple, and then I'll move on and we'll close. And that's how we have to figure out and learn how to validate their feelings, seek to understand their feelings, and not be so quick to just jump in and solve the issue and tell them what they should do. Let's just be honest for one moment that our kids, they would have such an awesome life if they would just let us control everything. How many of you just say amen to that? Like if they would just listen to us. But if we think about it, we didn't listen to our parents, but then we'll say, but I didn't, I'm not like my parents. I am so much better than they were. To which our parents are like, it's cute you think that. Like it's cute <laughs> that you think that. But figuring out ways to understand where they're coming from, and this is a challenge in our house because I have one who's in very much control of her emotions and one that isn't. It's very easy to jump in and try to shut it down uh, instead of listening and seeking to understand and, and trying to help them solve the issue. Here's a big one for us. And it's getting quiet, which I know, I'm turning the corner, and that's this. Learn to apologize when you should. Oh, yes, right there. He's just looking for his parent to apologize to him. But I'm talking to the parents right now. To apologize to your kids. And the reason why is they need to see it modeled. They need to see you say, you know what? I was wrong and I am so sorry about that. I should not have blown up like that and yelled like that. Church, last week... I yelled at my kid in the ShopRite parking lot in Forest Hill, not even kidding, 10 seconds later, is that you, Pastor Joey? From someone from Freedom Church. <laughs> this is a total true story, no exaggeration. I thought I was disguised, I had a hoodie on and a hat and glasses, and all I could do was like, yep, I just hung my head down right there. And I'm like, I am so sorry that you saw that right there. She's driving me crazy right now. And I love it. She was just like, you're human. It's okay. And I'm like, I am human. And they deserved it. No, but. 
But the truth is that was not time or place to blow up like I did. And to be able to pull my kid aside and say, I am sorry that I, I should not have done that, just speaks volumes, goes a long way. And then the last thing is this, and this is the hardest one. We're going to have to learn as parents to be patient. Be patient. If your kids are a seed, sometimes it takes a long time for that seed to grow in the way that you've been training it and molding it. But we got to have a plan and we got to stick to it. Here's the last one and the band can come. We talked about the variety of arrows. We talked about it's about the aim. But really, ultimately, right here, number three, you and I have to learn to trust the wind. To trust the wind. When the archer shoots, they do everything in their power to hit the bullseye. But the truth is, if they are outside, the wind is the boss. And parents, we do our part, but we have to get to a place then where we then trust the wind of the Holy Spirit to do his part. We live like our kids are a blessing. We parent by faith. We customize our parenting because our kids are different. We aim according to the flight plan, but we understand this hard truth that arrows were never meant to be fired. They were meant to be released. And at one point, after we've done all that we can do, we have to then release them to the Lord. Oh, and it's hard. We've raised them, trained them, we've done our best. But then to get to the point one day where we just have to release them so that they can fly on their own, that is so hard. But if we can learn to let go and trust that God loves them even more than we do, how that's even possible, I don't even know. But trusting God as the wind of their life, that he will steer them to the bullseye. And yeah, some of your kids right now are taking the long way around. But God is not a wind that blows them off target. He's one that blows them towards the target. He's a loving father that will guide them to himself. Can you trust him for it? When you've done all that you can, that God will do the rest. Train them, love them, aim them, release them. And when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Will you bow your heads with me? Jesus, I'm just asking for a faith and a confidence to rise up in those that are parenting right now and man it's been heavy but Lord as you said in your word that we can be confident that you that began a good work in our son and daughter will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus Jesus, help us to realize that this is not just for parents and for kids, but it's for us as well, that you are our heavenly father who wants to uniquely father us. And God, we want to aim our lives towards you, whatever that means. Take a step towards you today. Maybe it's in our conversations or maybe our commitment to your house. Maybe it's opening up your word or jumping on a team, doing something that is a step towards you. And as we do that, we trust that your wind is going to guide us to yourself. And can I speak to the parents today that are just in it? And you're just wondering, I've prayed, I've done what I can, and it just seems like my kid is out there right now. Maybe you weren't following Christ when they were younger, or maybe you were, and you raised them as best you could, but they've walked away. Please let this break off of you today, that there is no condemnation and no shame. And understand this truth that God is not done with them yet. Don't give up. Keep praying. Keep loving. Keep training. Keep aiming. I don't care how old you are. Your son may be 50 years old. But the prayer of a righteous person, you, is powerful and effective. I am here, Freedom Church, because I had a praying mom and dad. Intentional with their aim got us into God's house. We worshiped as a family, but even they would tell you there were some tough times and all we could do is just release you and let the wind of the Holy Spirit guide you into his truth. And that's what God wants to do with your kids. Do you receive that word today? Why don't you say amen and stand to your feet right now as we close.